Well, call Richard and say, you want the hour before me to prepare people for the intensive brainwash they're going, brain brainwashing they're going to get by watching my program. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, Jonathan, I'm still looking for that whale book. That's the wrong whale. Uh, that doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, because I don't have the page number. I, I was just looking through my presentation. Note, and I noticed, since I want accuracy, that, uh, that I don't have the page reference of which book that is. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word on it. Whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, Biology, Dynamics of Life. Uh, it's like this one, but it's got a different killer whale on the front. It's a Princess Hall. Oh, it's got Glencoe. Doesn't matter. All right. Anyway, so what, what's your point now? Do you know of anything about evolution that would make – do you have any points to support the theory that we came from a, a soup, okay, or a dot? Um, I, you mean like abiogenesis? Well, you said I should characterize it as we came from a dot or came from soup instead of a rock, or rocks, you know, on a mother and father rock. But what evidence do you have that we came from soup then? Um, abiogenesis is, is fairly poorly supported, and I think that what Dr. Rainbow told you in his debate is a pretty good uh, concession of that. Do you, remember, do you remember what he said? It's a concession that it's poorly supported. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. I agree. By poorly supported, you would you say that would uh, rise to the level of not part of science and should not be in textbooks? Uh, I would say I, I would call it something like proto science. Proto science. How about fairy tale? Is that better? Or is that too blunt? <laughs> I think it's a little bit too blunt. Too blunt. Very. I, I think that teaching kids about abiogenesis is uh, probably not a good idea. But do you agree that they do it? Oh, sure. Okay, so I think you, a lot of crap you, is taught in school that shouldn't be taught. That's yeah, would you at least help me get that out? We could agree on that, that that uh, should be out of the books. Well, like I said before, I mean, I don't think that your efforts to get things out of the textbooks and, and changing pedagogy is really going to be very effective because you do things in such a way that if somebody isn't already on their side, they're not going to listen to what you're saying. Like, as far as people on school boards are concerned. Oh, I don't they, know. They are not going to just, like, to switch over to the creationist bandwagon. And that's you'd, pretty much what you're promoting. You'd be surprised how many people on school boards watch my seminar and call me and say, how can I do, how can I fix this in my school? We're making a real impact on the school boards. Yeah, but there are people that are already creationists. Well, what difference would that make? Are you, you saying if a person is a creationist, they're no longer qualified to be intelligent? That's, that is, I will not say that. I've met way more oh, yeah, intelligent yeah. creationists. Say that. Well, good. At least, at least we now. There are people you agree in evolutionist camp who would disagree with your statement and say, "No, sure. If you sure, believe creation, sure. you're automatically disqualified from having a brain." I mean, there yeah, are people, people who believe people that. are idiots when yeah. you say that. They just obviously have been intelligent yeah. creation. All right, we got a bunch of folks waiting on instant message here. One, one last point here. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I do want to make one point, and that is about uh, the thing with the trilobites before that I was talking with Jonathan and you about. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm going to give you a concession. The statement that I made about trilobites. Uh, existing today, uh, you know, being a very serious challenge or, or really upsetting evolutionists, I, I, I'm taking that back. So if they found living trilobites, that still would not change evolution theory? It would. It, what it would do is it would cause a minor problem uh, in the ways <laughs> that... Uh, but it's not completely unembraceable, is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and Jonathan, and you, and you were making that point, and I was wrong, and you were right, and that's all I wanted to say about that. Well, I was being a little bit too dogmatic about well, that. Well, come on down. I'll buy you chicken parmesan, and we can talk about it over dinner. There you go. Uh, I'm vegetarian, sorry. I'll buy you a vegetarian chicken. Veg the chickens ate vegetables. That's how they corn. I mean... <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the, what, what I wanted to say about that was that if they discovered trilobites living today, it would be a problem in the sense that... Uh, it would have to. It would demand an explanation for why we're not getting signals from them in the geologic column. But why it did, wouldn't cause. It, it wouldn't be a falsification point. Okay. Why did we not get signals of coelacanth for 325 million years? Yeah, I actually talked about an evolutionary biologist about that very recently. In fact, uh, there's good reasons for that. There is. Uh, it, I, as far as I understand, um, all deep sea marine animals are poorly represented in the recent geological strata. It's not just trilobites. I mean, it's not just coelacanth. But do you realize your, your entire statement just then is based on the assumption that evolution is true? Sure, and that's okay. exactly why I wasn't going to talk about it until you okay. brought it up, because it's not the kind okay. of thing that I want to, I want to debate on. All right, well, good. However, however, one more thing. The, okay. the thing about hominids being found in Cambrian rock, that is a falsification point. And that's why I have not uh, responded yet about the KBS test thing and the... Yeah, but wait a minute. I, I, still, I still want to know, how do you know a rock is Cambrian? How do I you don't... I, okay, if, if you want me to go research that and look it up, I will. I do. do I want you, you to tell to me. That? I want you to tell me how does anybody on planet Earth determine that a rock is Cambrian or Jurassic? Do you think, Kent, do you honestly think there is no way to tell that a rock is Cambrian? I, I believe the only way that they can tell a rock is Cambrian is by the index fossils, 
which goes to the circular reasoning argument I mentioned very clearly on video number four. Okay, even if I gave you that, what I would probably guess, if I just had to purely guess, I would, I would guess that there is a type of Cambrian animal that defines that strata layer. There, you're, you're conceding my point. The fossils determine the rock layer. Yeah, and, and why is this possible, Kent? The whole thing is baloney. It's circular Why reasoning. is it possible to do that? It's not possible to do that. So all that is based on the assumption that there's an order of the way animals evolved. Exactly. And you said the other day that there was no pattern to the geological record. How is it the case that people can figure out what strata it is by the fossils in it, if that's not the case? How can you not see what you're saying? How can you not see what you're saying? You're saying there's no pattern to the geologic column at no. all. If you find a bunch of trilobites in one rock layer and decide to call that Cambrian because of the trilobite, you are dating the layer by the fossil. But then they turn around and date the fossil by the layer. It is absolute circular reasoning and wouldn't hold up two seconds in a court of law. Uh, do you want to talk? Okay, I'm going to call in later, like tomorrow or the next day. Sure, that'd be great. This. Yeah, okay. find out. Okay. I want to know how they tell why rock is Cambrian. Please tell me. Okay, thanks for calling.